All right, what's going on everybody? The Iceman here. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, basically why does John Cena get the hate that he gets? Um, everybody says that John Cena buries all the talent that comes up in the WWE. Um, I, I, I have to tend to disagree with that, but I, I want to go back a little bit in time. Uh, around the time that John Cena and Randy Orton emerged into the WWE, both coming from OVW, um, when they arrived in the WWE, The Undertaker was working full-time, Shawn Michaels was around, Triple H was going full bore, Edge and Christian were there, um, we had the Hardy Boys, uh, I mean, Batista was there. Uh, the talent was just, like, immense back when Orton and Cena came into the WWE. And they were new talent. And, you know, it took them a couple years. Well, Randy Orton pretty much started off pretty quick because Triple H recruited him for Evolution. But it took John Cena a couple years to get where... Um, to get where he got noticed, um, obviously we all know about the uh, thugonomics gimmick, um, the ruth, ruthless aggression era, but it was around a time where there was so many stars that when a young guy came up, it was it was easier for a young guy to beat one of those superstars because there was just so many, so many superstars. And, you know, when a Cena beat a Kurt Angle or, or when a Cena beat a Triple H or a Shawn Michaels, it was cool. It was cool. There was so many superstars. And everybody's on Cena's case these days. Um, you know, to be quite honest with you, the man you see in the ring is the man you see outside the ring. Uh, I do believe that. Uh, like I said, my nephews met him, and he said he was a really cool guy when he met him. And he said he's pretty much the same. You know, he, he acts the same when he's in the WWE ring. But nowadays... You know, as far as, you know, you talk about Cena, Barry, and talent and whatnot, you have two major stars uh, in the WWE that have been around uh, for some time. Now, if you want to consider Big Show and Kane, yeah, I suppose you can, but Kane was big to the point not to where, you know, how often did he get the the WWE or world title? Um, Big Show's had it on, on a number of occasions, but nowhere near like the likes of Randy Orton or John Cena. And you, you really can't include Kane and Big Show up there with John Cena and Randy Orton. And my point here is, that's all you have in the WWE, is Randy Orton and John Cena as their top, top, major stars. If you want to include Lesnar, you know, that's up to you, but the guy's just not around enough to really, you know, really make a difference, to be quite honest with you. And, you know, that's what I'm saying. Orton and Cena now are the two top guys in the WWE. You have guys lower than him, like Kane and Big Show. Uh, Seth Rollins is still not up there at the level of Cena or Orton nor is Roman Reigns or Dean Ambrose or Dolph Ziggler or Ryback. The WWE just never made these guys as big as they could have or as big as they should have. I think Dolph Ziggler needs to be right up there with the Rollins, the Reigns, the Ambroses. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, he is. Well, is he? When do you ever see... You know, when was the last time Dolph Ziggler went after the world title or the WWE title? 
It's been a very, very long time. And this is my point. When young talent come up, you know, you have two stars that really, you know, would make a difference if these young talents beat them. And that's John Cena and Randy Orton. It's only two guys. Like I said, back when Cena and Orton came in, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, you had Edge, you had Christian, you had Kurt Angle. You, the, the list goes on. There was all these major stars in the WWE, whereas when a young guy came up, you know, you could be any one of these guys. And nobody would really think twice about it. Or if any, you know, if any one of these guys beat the younger star. You know, there were so many top stars. Nobody ever singled anyone, anybody out saying, well, you know, he don't put nobody over. Because it was just so many stars. Now you got the two. And this is why bringing up Neville... Neville's going to be somebody sometime in the future of the WWE. Kevin Owens is going to be somebody very soon in the WWE. Samoa Joe, when he comes up to the main roster, is going to be somebody very soon in the WWE. And this is the only problem with all of this now is Cena and Orton's time is run, running down. It's winding down. And we're going to have this same situation all over again, because whether it be Seth Rollins at the top of the mountain or Roman Reigns at the top of the mountain, the WWE is going to need to have whomever they choose to be their top superstar. They can't have them lose just like they couldn't have John Cena lose or like they couldn't have Randy Orton lose. So people are going to get in that same mode again. So who's ever on the top of the mountain, is going to be in that position where they're going to get ridiculed and get bitched about because they don't put people over. It is what it is. It's it it's not John Cena's fault. It's not Randy Orton's fault. The only fault or finger you can point at is management, whether it be Triple H, Vince McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, the booking committee. They need to develop the guys they have on their roster. Don't quit those pushes because how many times have we seen pushes start like with Cesaro? They dropped it. Ryback, they dropped it. Dolph Ziggler, was, he was on top of the mountain. And what happened? He gets a concussion and all of a sudden, boom. We still see him wrestle great matches. But it's with the same people all the time. And that's only because the roster is only being used, you know, by the booking committee. It's only a portion of the roster that really continues to be used. The WWE needs to expand their roster. And, you know, you have SmackDown, you have Raw, you have Main Event. Use these guys. Push them. Make them look bigger. Make them look better. Give them the opportunity. Don't just take a handful and say, well, we're going to use these two guys, blah, 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 to go after the world title. And maybe we can use this for the Intercontinental or the U.S. title. But, you know, we don't really care. Because that's what it comes down to. Because the United States title and the Intercontinental belt really had no meaning until just recently at WrestleMania when Daniel Bryan won the IC belt and when John Cena got the U.S. belt. And now with the injury to Daniel Bryan, he relinquished it. Ryback gets it in Elimination Chamber. And hopefully the WWE pushes Ryback. But they're already pushing Big Show that he came back. And Big Show wants that IC belt. And it wouldn't surprise me if Big Show gets that IC belt away from Ryback. And here we go again. So you can put Big Show into the category that you people want to put John Cena in. Give Ryback a chance to make a name for himself. 
Big Show doesn't need to make a name for himself. He's been around in the WWE since, what, 1999 or whatever? He's been around forever. So when you think about putting John Cena down, uh, putting hate on John Cena because you think he never puts anybody over, the bottom line is it's only him and Orton. And those two guys can't lose all the time. Let's face it, they can't. And their time is winding down. And when the WWE loses both of these guys, you want to complain now? You'll be complaining a lot more later on. Believe me. This is the Iceman. Peace out, everybody. Have yourself a great day.